Hello everyone and welcome back to Insights at Dee Dee Lynn Designs. This is Dee Dee Lynn and I love to share a unique twist in the ancient art of wire. And today we're going to make these really fun rings. They're open in the back. You can actually make these to where they're closed. But today we're going to do an open one so that they're semi-adjustable. On this one I used a abalone shell and they are drilled through stones and beads. So before we get started, just a couple of notes. One, uh, if you're new to my tutorials, I'm very detail oriented and specifically for beginners. So um, if you're advanced, you might want to fast forward a lot of my chitter chatter. And two, everyone, I'd really appreciate your subscriptions. Hit that subscribe button down below, comments and feedback. Uh, in order to continue to do these free tutorials, I'm working desperately to get monetized and it takes a lot of viewing hours and subscribers uh, to get up in YouTube's uh, top videos. So I don't really know what they call it. All social media is a little bit bat seek to me, like bat crazy. <laughs> but in any event, I'd really appreciate uh, your feedback. And if you have any questions, certainly reach out to me. I will get back to you. So to get started, I wanted to give you a couple of tips and rules of thumb to understand how to measure a ring size and based on the ring that you're going to be making. So I'm using a ring mandrel and I'm always going to be using excess wire. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. One, we're going to be making a loop. Okay, so what you could do first is create your loop. So bring your wire together and I've cut uh, six inches of 16 gauge wire. And then we're going to be adding wire. So I've cut an additional four inches of wire. And after we make our loop, we're going to be attaching our bead, okay? And then we're going to be bringing in our other wire to weave the uh, piece together. So it's a little fiddly, but I'll show you here in a minute. It'll all make sense. So this is pretty easy tutorial. So the first thing that you wanna do is decide on your bead. I am using a five millimeter in circumference, I guess, or, or width. I'm using a five millimeter amethyst semi-precious gemstone. Let's try this again. See if I can hold it. There we go. So if you don't have one of these, um, forgot what they're called, measuring gauges, it's inches on top and millimeters on the bottom, it would be something really good to get and invest in if you're passionate about the ancient art of wire. So I'm working with a five millimeter bead and I'm just kind of giving myself an idea of how much of a loop I want to make and the reason being is you're going to need working space to bring in your weaving wire and you're going to be wrapping it around that loop so like this and on this ring I used a 12 gauge half round and it's harder to work with when you're starting out so I would recommend doing 16 gauge I know some people like to use 20 gauge on rings they really in my opinion don't hold up when you're only using two wires. I want it to be sturdy and durable and strong, so I want it to last. Don't want it bending on the client, especially if you're selling in the market. So what I'm going to do is, while my beads are all flying around, I'm gonna put this little guy in here on that ring. I wanna make a ring size six. So I'm going to center my string, and by the way, this string is uh, six and a half inches long. And um, all I'm gonna do is create a loop. And I'm just kind of figuring out um, the size of the loop that I wanna make. 
and it's probably not going to be that big but it just kind of gives me an idea. And then I'm going to put it on the size six on my man roll, and my loop is going to sit above the six. So it's kind of riding on the um, size five. And then this is just giving me an idea of how much wire I want to cut. And I'm not going to need that much because I'm going to cut it off in the back, but I just like to have working wire. So I'm going to take my 16 gauge and I'm going to find my center and from this point to this point is one inch from here to here. So I know that this is six inches long so or a little over. So I'm going to move it in and let me just measure this in its entirety. So I'm going to find my center which is three and it just kind of helps me keep everything in line. So there's my three mark, meaning three inches. And then you can either use, and I don't know where my bead went, here it is. You can either use a mandrel, I mean not a mandrel, a round nose, or you can use your six step pliers. And because I know that that is a five millimeter bead, I'm always going to be using a larger size because I can squeeze that loop down if I need to. So just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna be using the largest step on my six step pliers and I'm just centering that up and pushing my wires around and crossing them over. And I'm just gonna push this down. And then I'm gonna get my bead. And I know that that's too big, but I've got working room to make adjustments and corrections. So I'm gonna set my bead there. And what's most important, and let me see if I can lay this in my hand, is you wanna make sure that you have enough space on the sides to bring in weaving wire on each side so that you can tie off this bead, okay? So I want, I'm looking at that and it looks like I've got about a millimeter and a half on each side. You can have a little less or you can have a little more, but I think that's a good fit there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm not gonna narrow the top. I'm just going to hold this firmly right here. I'm gonna hold the frame of my loop and I'm gonna use my finger and I'm gonna push that down because I just wanna make this smaller. And do you see how I'm making it smaller? And I'm gonna do that again. Because I don't need a lot of space from here to the top of my loop. So I'm gonna keep doing that. And then I'm gonna put my bead back in. And I think I wanna squeeze it in now. So there's adjustments that you're going to be making. And I'm gonna get my flat nose. And on the highest part of the arc, I'm just going to squeeze that in a little bit. And you're gonna do a little bit at a time and then put your, back, your bead back in because you always wanna make sure, based on the stone that you're using, that you have space between the sides, okay? to connect your wire. And I'm going to be using a 24 gauge weaving wire because I want that good and sturdy and strong and I don't want the possibility of that wire snapping. So that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to put my ring on so that you can see this while we're working. And I'm gonna hammer this because I want it nice and strong and I'm gonna do that in my garage because I can't bring my hammering block in here. This table is not sturdy enough to support me beating the dickens out of this wire and I'll be right back. So what I've done is I've hammered my wire and if you're new to hammering, specifically for beginners, it's going to spread your wire out. So when this is your opportunity to put your bead back in, so I'm gonna put my bead back in and I'm just looking at the width, and I've got plenty of width here. 
And this is now my opportunity. If you don't like the, if you, if you got hammer marks, you've watched my videos before, then many of you know I use a buffer. This is a very light sanding buffer, and it's specifically made for fingernails, acrylic nails, natural nails. And all I'm doing is just gently buffing out the uh, hammer marks. You can leave them because they have a beautiful texture. And I'm just kind of going around. And this is going to be my front. And if you are a beginner, you may want to mark where you want your front to be. That way, you always know that you're on the correct side. And this is also going to shine up my copper and clean it up really good in case there's oils or your copper's been sitting around a while and has naturally ox started oxidizing. Of course, I'm gonna oxidize this ring, also known as patina. Um, so this is kind of like what I have. And I'm gonna look at this on my finger. And if you can, you might wanna set it down. And I might bring this bottom in a little bit more. So I'm just gonna grab my pliers and down on the bottom, not on the top this time, because I want the space to bring in my weaving wire. I'm just going to down on the bottom, squeeze her in a little bit more, okay? And then I'm gonna put my bead back in because I wanna make sure that I've got plenty of space and I've actually brought that in too much. So this is what's lovely about copper. It's just so easy to work with. All I'm doing is pushing off the top and opening that up a little bit. It's just giving me more width. And I'm looking at that again and determining, do I have enough width to get my 24 gauge weaving wire in there? And I think I'm gonna open it up just a little bit more. And by doing it off the top, it's actually spreading it apart a little bit more up here, okay? And I think I'm gonna get my buffer here and just clean up that edge. Okay. So now I'm looking at this, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to square off or straighten my legs. So I'm gonna simply do that with my pliers and I'm gonna hold this firmly here. And all I'm gonna do is just bend this down, kind of like on much of an, as much of a 90 degree angle that I can get. And then I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. And I'm coming very close to the cross and I'm just bending that down, just straightening it out and giving it a look and just making some tweaks and adjustments. And then I'm gonna straighten my wire and if you're new to wire wrapping, you can simply do this by gently squeezing with the largest jaw, meaning the largest part of the jaw of your plier and just going up and down that wire, turning it over and going up and down it again and it's gonna straighten it out beautifully. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just straighten out that wire. You're not gonna be using all of this, but it's good to have everything nice and tidy and neat and where you want it as you're setting yourself up. And I've decided that I wanna make this my front. That was originally my back, but because of the way that this is bending over here, there's nothing wrong with that. I just like this side better. So I'm gonna put it down on my board and just make sure everything's nice and flat. And I'm gonna go ahead and buff this side. Now you can weave this any way you want. I weaved up here on this one because this particular stone is drilled through from top to bottom and it would be too wide in my opinion to have it sitting um, horizontally. So I have it uh, weaved in vertically, okay? Using the bead, we're gonna go ahead and weave that in or lash this in and we're gonna do that horizontally. So I am now going to start the weaving process. 
and I'm gonna get my 24 gauge. And I'm gonna cut myself about 12 inches, probably too much, but that's okay. We can be a little uh, loose with using weaving wire because it's so inexpensive. And, and you're gonna start to get an idea of where we're going with this, where I'm gonna start bringing in the secondary wire to bring this ring together. And I just came up with this on my own. And if you want to follow my newest designs, you can follow my Instagram, D-D-L-Y-N-N-D-E-S-I-G-N-S. -N -N -E that's plural. And Dee Lynn Designs would be the same for my Facebook, Dee Dee Lynn Designs, my webpage, DeeDeeLynnDesigns.com. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start weaving in. And um, I'm going to open this up just a little bit to give myself some working room. Do you see that? So I've got a space to come in. You always want to give yourself as much working room as possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and loop this through. And I'm just starting on, where's my front? This is my front, okay. So I'm going to make three wraps, and they are going to be three complete full rotations. So when I'm coming back up, it's the wire is coming in between because I'm going to cut it here. Then I'm going to slide my wire up. And I'm going to start to decide, let me bring this around. And you can weave all the entire sides, if you want, all the way up, where I want to set my bead. So I'm going to bring my wire through. Because this is my front. Okay. And I'm just fiddling around and deciding on where I want my center. And then I'm gonna go ahead and weave through this side. And I'm just doing this very simple. And I think you guys, I'm gonna wrap this around two more times. I'm always changing up as I go, because I'm thinking, you know what, I think I want more wraps in there. And that's the beauty of this ancient art of wire. And if you're new to wire art, I encourage you to look up the history. It dates back before the Phoenicians and they did the most beautiful, most beautiful filigree work with gold when it was inexpensive. <laughs> and it was really inexpensive then. And then I'm gonna come around and I'm coming back down and as I mentioned, you can do this any way you like. And now I'm gonna rock this because I want it really, really snug and tight in there. And I'm just gonna keep feeding my wire through. And you wanna watch when you're working with a thicker weaving wire that it doesn't kink up. So always keep a good, healthy loop. If you tighten your wire against your frame and bend it down, you're going to, by making the bend in the wire, you're going to make it more difficult, and this is for beginners, to pull your th wire through. If you keep a loop in it, it will pull through beautifully for you. And then I'm just rocking it. Whoops, I don't know how I missed that. I'm gonna bring them together. And 
And you can see when you're working with a thicker gauged weaving wire, and again, this is 24 gauge, that it has a tendency to want to bend and, and kink on itself. Um, and you just follow what you're doing. I'm just counting my wraps here. Got five and five. So now I want to show you a cool little tip of how to secure your wire even more. And it's a good thing I've got some extra tail over here. So this is my front. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring my wire over. So I'm on my back now. And I'm going to kind of train it. I'm telling it where I want it to go. And I'm gonna tuck it over the top here of the wire coming through the bead and I'm gonna hold this here. Let me get my chain nose. And I'm gonna pull this wire through. Now, this is what's really important. You wanna hold this wire in the position. Do you see that right there, where I have my thumb? You wanna hold that in that position as you're pulling it through the other side. And I'm going to pull that down now, and I'm gonna use my pliers, and I'm pushing that wire in. pushing it in, and then I'm squeezing my wraps together. Now, I'm on, again, I'm on the back side, so you can see that wire coming over where the wire is running through the stone. Then I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to go back to the front. And this is just kind of a different design element, and it's a really great way to secure your wire again. Um, and really create uh, a very fitted, tight uh, weave between the bead and these two wires. And then I'm gonna bring it back through. And I'm on my front now. And I'm going to bring that wire through. And it just creates a really neat design element. I'm going to get my chain nose, and I'm going to push that down a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to bring this wire back over so it's coming out the back. And I'm just going to make, I'm a little short on wire here, but I'm pretty sure I can get three wraps. And I'm coming off the top now, meaning coming off the top of the frame. I'm above the bead. And I'm just going to feed that wire through. Let me use my fingers. And this is why you want the space. So you've got good working room. And especially when you're working with a thicker gauge. So I'm just pulling it around. Now I'm going to come back over to the front here because I want to watch and see what I'm doing. And I pulled that wire through, kind of squeezing them together. And I'm going to stop there for a minute because I want to make sure I've got working room over here. So I'm on the back again. And this is way too much wire. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And I'm setting myself up again holding that wire kind of with my thumbnail in the position that I want. And I'm coming through. This is my back. And I'm going to pull that wire gently through until I get it in the position that I want. Then I'm going to give it a little squeeze because I'm just kind of pushing that wire in and I'm pulling my wraps together. <clears throat> That's my back. Then I'm coming around the top again, giving it a good little snug. And then I'm gonna run that wire through. And I'm going to push it through. Now you know why we need that gap space, right? And then I'm going to come back up. And I'm checking out my back and 
slide. And I'm going to slide these wires up a little bit. So this is my back. And I'm going to bring this wire through again. And I'm going to come over the top, over the side, like I did here. So we're just going to start sliding these up a little bit. Just make adjustments and corrections as we go. Then I'm going to bring that wire through again. It's just a really cool technique, and I just kind of did this on my own. I didn't really have anybody instructing me on how to do this. Just came up with it. All I'm doing is just centering it up. <clears throat> then I'm going to bring it through again, and I'm going to go ahead and use that tail on the other side too. I'm pretty sure I can get a couple more wraps out of that. So let's start working with this little guy because he's hardening up and I don't want him to snap. So I'm just kind of, whoops, as I mentioned, <laughs> it snapped. I'm just kind of rocking that through and then squeezing them up. squeezing these two up and I think I should be able to get this through one more time I'm hoping looks like I got enough wire to do that but I need to use my needle nose so I'm just going to guide that wire it looks like it's going to end up on the inside exactly where I want it to end up Just kind of whittling it and pushing it down in there. Now I'm going to get my little handy dandy tool here. I love this. It is a wood carving tool and I'm just going to push my wire down on the inside of this loop frame. And that's all I'm doing, I'm just tucking it in. Because my needle nose are a little too thick to push that in there. So I am using what's available to me. Then I'm gonna come around the back and I can see that that actually is lined up perfectly. It's right on the inside of the frame right in here. And I'm going to see if I can just rock this wire in a little bit more. And I can. And now I can push that little tail end right in and I tucked it away. So now I'm going to line these up because they're a little cockeyed and that's not a problem at all. Just pushing this side down and pushing this side up. I use my nails a lot. So, and then I'm going to bring this wire back through, but I'm not going to complete another rotation. So I have three wraps on each side, but I always want to finish my wire off, if I can, on the inside of this frame. Um, one, it hides it away and it's not going to poke anybody. And I'm also going to see, if you've watched my videos, if I can snap this so that it breaks off beautifully clean on the inside of this frame here. So this is what we're looking at so far. And isn't that cute? So that's going to be our little ring. So I'm going to go ahead and start twisting. And boy, did it snap off beautifully. So it's just a little 
circular movement that you're making with your wire and it'll snap it clean off. So here's what we have so far. So we're starting our ring. So now we're going to weave and do the band. And I got lots of tools in the way here. So I'm gonna bring in my other wire and I'm just looking at this and making sure that it's squared off, straight, And then I'm going to straighten this wire. And I want to show you a really cool trick how to do this. You're going to get either a hammering block or your one pound spool. And you're just going to start running your spool over the wire, back and forth. And it'll start to line up. If your ends are tipped down too much, you'll need to straighten them out. But this is a really cool way to straighten a short piece of round wire. There we go, you hear that? Now that wire is rolling back and forth underneath my spool, and I'm just making it beautifully straight. That's really nice, isn't it? So now, where did my ring go as I tossed it off? I'm gonna line up this piece of wire and I'm just centering it in between. As I mentioned, this is excess. We're not going to use this, all of this. And um, you're going to be giving yourself quite a tail based on how much weaving you're going to do. Okay. So I'm thinking based on how much weaving I have on this ring here. And I know I'm probably going to make a size six that I'm going to need... I'm going to say 20 inches of a tail. So just to be safe, I'm going to do, because I've run out before, 24. And then I'm going to work off the spool. So this is my 24 inches here. And I'm just going to start my weaving process. And what I'm going to do is I'm measuring here of how much wire. Do you see how I've got this wire down on the bottom and it's on my attachment wire because before I can start weaving these two wires together I need to weave enough wire just a coil on the attachment wire to our ring before I start weaving them together so I'm looking at the distance here let me put this down and I want to start connecting my weave right past where this wire crosses over and a little bit further out. So I look at that, and let me come over here, because I know that that's a half an inch. And I'm going to probably start with a little less than a half an inch. And I'm just kind of centering this here so I know where to start. So I'm gonna start right about here, and I'm gonna do several wraps. So right now I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna push those together, bring my wire up around the back, and then I'm gonna line it up to see if I have enough of a coil to start connecting these two wires together. And by the way, everyone, you could hammer these if you wanted. But because I'm using 16 gauge, I really don't see the need. And if you hammer 16 gauge, it's harder to bend it around your mandrel. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, I'm gonna add two more wraps. Push those together. Just pushing them together. I need different pliers to do that, those little needle nose. I needed a really good flat edge. Just making sure everybody's nice and snug in there. Now I'm going to start my weaving pattern. And I've got a wire coming up underneath the back. 
on this side. So that's my left. And now this one's going to start coming over. And it's a little fiddly. You want to give yourself enough space in between your wires based on how thick your weaving wire is. So I'm using a 24 gauge. Be careful not to pull them together. You can use a clamp if you want, but I don't see the need for myself right now. So I'm going to do a wrap over the top. So here's two wires. I'm going to come in between the two, go over the top and all the way around the back, and coming around the back over my base wire, my wire number one. And I'm gonna push that together. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm going over wires one and two, in between wires one and two, over wire two, all the way around the back, and over my base wire number one. Now, before I continue that weave, I'm gonna push it together, snug it up, and I'm gonna start that same process on this side. And I'm just gonna turn it over so I have a good working position because I don't want to do all the weaving here. It's going to start bringing these together and over here on this side and spreading these out. So I want to keep them lined up really nice. So do a couple wraps on one side and then go ahead and start on the other. So I'm coming around the back now, right? So I need to go over this wire in between the two because I want them to match on each side. Then all the way around the back and over the top, and that is one repeat. And then I'm gonna bring them together. If your wires start really pulling in together, just be mindful and watch them and separate them out a little, again, a little bit. So I'm going over both wires, and since I'm working from my with my bead facing down, I'm just gonna call this wire one and wire two. So I'm gonna go over wire two all the way around the back, and over wire one. And that's two repeats. And I'm gonna squeeze them again together. When you're working with a thicker gauged weaving wire, I always recommend that you stop after a couple of wraps and really push them together. So now I'm gonna turn it around and I've got my loose wire connecting up there. I'm just gonna take a look and make sure that their spacing is even and it looks pretty even to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that process again. Just straightening my wire. And over both wires, in between wires one and two, over wire two, all the way around the back and over wire one. And I'm just pulling them apart a little bit as we're moving along. Now I'm pushing down on my wires and I'm flattening them a little bit. And it's a little fiddly. to spread that out. Sorry about getting out of frame there. You can also use your uh, nylon jaw pliers if you want. And we're just going to push, really push those in and smash them down. Then I'm going to start some rotations on this side again because I want to keep things you know, even, and it's just, I don't know, I find that for me, you do what works for you. I kind of like to do each side, a little bit on each side each time, if that makes any sense. And I probably got way too much weaving wire, but that's okay, I'd rather have too much than not enough. So I'm thinking you could probably get away with about 15 inches. Let me tell you what I've got left of my 24 inches here. I've got uh, 12 inches left. So 15, 15 inches I think would be good.
Okay, so I'm gonna get these guys, push them in, and smash them down. So I'm gonna go do a little bit more on this side now. Uh oh, got a tangle. Bear with me here. My half round wire that I have hanging on my lamp got caught up. I think I need to go move that somewhere else. Okay, so I'm gonna spread these apart a little bit. I see them pulling in and this is what I mean. So flatten those down. And you can use a guitar pick, anything you want to keep your, you know, keep your wires spread evenly apart. Now, I'm looking at this and I want to make sure I have the same amount of wraps, so I'm going to count off and I'm going to count off the straight wire, meaning the one that's going over both wires. I've got nine there. And I'm going to do nine here. This is going to be my ninth. These are kind of spreading out a little bit too much for me. So what we're going to do now before we continue weaving, slide all these guys together. This is going to be so pretty. Okay, so I know that I want a size six and I've got my little handy dandy string here. So I'm going to get my mandrel out and I can use a ring that I've already created. So this is kind of a cool tip and a guide and I can say, okay, I'm gonna put this on my mandrel and this is about a five. So just for giving myself an idea of how much weaving I wanna do, I can either count these wraps or not or I can say, how much weaving did I do on this to make this an open? adjustable size five ring and it looks like I did an inch so right now I'm only at about a half an inch so this is kind of a gauge for you it's like all right I'm gonna do some more weaving so let me measure that up again yep because from this mark to this mark is an inch so, and right now I've got about a half an inch. So I'm gonna keep weaving up to an inch as I get my tangles untangled. I'll be right back. Okay, everyone. So one of the things I wanted to bring um, out is that I had mentioned that you could probably use less wire. Nope. So my first estimation of how much wire we would need, I've done uh, just over a little over an inch, okay? From this point to this point is an inch, okay? And this is how much wire I have left uh, from that 24 inches I cut, which looks about a little over about three and a half inches. So you definitely want, if you're going to be making a five to six size ring, you definitely want uh, when you working off the spool, 24 inches of tail wire. Okay. So my first, my second suggestion of saying you could probably use less wire. No, um, that is something that's always the hardest thing to calculate when you're uh, weaving is how much you're going to need. So anyways, also wanted to show you a little trick too, a little tip trick and technique. The, your your loose wire, your bottom wire, this one right here, is going to have a tendency to slide in and out. So if you just want to make sure you've got equal working length, all you're going to do is grab that wire and do a little twist and just pull it. If you want to make sure that you've got equal working wire. So now this is where we're going to bend this around our mandrel. And all I'm doing here is just kind of lining my wires up. And the first thing I'm going to do to set myself up is I'm actually going to start 
bending it. And all I'm doing is just kind of very gently giving it a little inside scoop, no pun intended, okay? Just makes it easier for me than putting it flat on my mandrel. You can see that I'm just, don't worry about where it's looking like it's twisting. It's going to definitely line up for us. Okay. We can always unravel if it's too much. And so I'm just kind of giving it a head start. Then I know that I wanted a size six. So here's my six, which you can't see the number. Disip oh, no, it didn't. Silly me. Here's my five and here's my six. I'm going to line the bottom wire, okay, up on that six. And I'm just going to push my thumb against that. And do you see how it helped us by giving it a head start? And all I'm going to do is I'm just using my fingers is I'm pushing this around. And if it's too much weaving, I can unravel or make it a bigger ring which I might do, I might make this a thumb ring because I really like thumb rings. So you know what, I can see that I've got a lot of weaving here. So I'm gonna bring this down and I'm putting this on my thumb and I'm probably gonna unravel some, maybe, maybe not. So by putting this on my thumb kind of lined me up and told me where I want to go. So that's looking at about a nine, nine and a half. So now I'm going to line this up on the nine mark and I'm just going to push my wires. And I'm sorry, you guys, if I'm out of frame there, I can't see the top of my camera because it's hanging over the top. And then I'm just going to push these over and cross them over. Now I actually could probably close this ring off. So if you wanted to close it off, you could. You could weave these together or unravel some or not. So I'm going to take it off my mandrel and I'm going to put it on my thumb because I love thumb rings and I decided if anybody knows me, I change my mind a lot. That's the beauty of this being an art and not a high production stamped out piece of jewelry. So I'm just playing around with it and seeing how it's sitting on my thumb. And then I'm turning around in the back and I'm looking at that again. So I'm gonna do some tweaking and all I'm going to do is, and I'm just rolling this down and I think I'm gonna, come from the inside, let's see. I'm trying to figure out what's easiest for me. And I'm just kind of tweaking, making some adjustments. Kind of want to roll her down a little bit. There we go. And I'm adjusting my frame. Now you could use a 16 gauge square, which I think would be ideal. I think square is always more ideal for rings than they are for, um, than, I'm sorry, than round wire is. So I'm looking at that, I really like that. I love it as a thumb ring. And now I'm gonna turn it around to the back, taking that off. And I'm definitely going to unravel some. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, let's see, where's my wires? Just looking to where they're coming through. So we're always adjusting as we go and I'm just unraveling. So I did one repeat or one set of unraveling and I'm trying to figure out where this little guy's coming through. And just doing one more here. Let's see, he's going over the top. Okay, so now to make my life a lot easier, I'm gonna cut off some of this excess. And since I'm using a 16 gauge, I'm gonna line this up with the shortest wire that I have. I'm using my super flush cutters. And if you're not familiar with these and you're a beginner, you really don't wanna use your 
normal flush cutters, and these are awesome, by the way, you guys. I've had them almost two years, and I'll put a link down below. Because they're gonna cut maybe into your blade, They, ha I have used these on 16 gauge. Uh, they've never cut into my blade, but you're always better when you're working with a thicker gauge wire to use a super flush cutter, because they're designed to cut six gauge wire. So I'm just gonna cut that, and then Right now, I'm just kind of eyeing it all. So I know that I was a size nine for my thumb. So I'm gonna line that up on the nine and I'm gonna cross them over and kind of flatten them out over each other even more. It's giving me an idea of where I want to bend my wires back, okay? so. I want a little bit more of a gap in here because I'm not tying these together. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and unravel a little bit more before I bend my wires back and make a loop and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just did one unravel because I wanted this gap space. I wanted it to be open so that it's a little adjustable for me and you'll see what I mean and then you always want to put your ring back on uh, the finger size that you want just to see how it's wearing and fitting and then I flattened them down and I'll show you what I mean I flattened them down more alongside each other because our fingers aren't perfectly round and so that's just giving me a gauge and then I'm coming back around and I'm looking at my size nine and everything looks like it's lining up pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers and I am going to bend this out. And you can do this on the mat mandrel or not. I'm gonna bend it out, okay? and I'm going to bend this one out away from the frame. So that's what you should have. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna hold my ring frame really firmly and I'm gonna bend it out and I'm gonna bend that out. So this is what we should have. Then I'm gonna put it back on my ring mandrel I'm gonna come down to my nine, and I'm just kind of flattening, pushing my wire in, because I'm gonna close that wire off. And I'm just getting an eye of how everything's going to set up for me, because I'm gonna make a loop here and a little tiny loop here. I'm not going to cut them off like I did on this half round, because I half round is flat on the back and round on the top, so I just cut these and made itty bitty tiny little curves in the wire. I'm actually gonna make a loop on this. So I'm just making sure everything's flat, it's lining up, and then I'm gonna take my weaving wire and I'm gonna bend this in a little bit more. I'm sorry, bend it out, okay? Or in, because I am bending it towards itself. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I'm gonna unravel this side here because I wanna start coiling around this outside wire. And you don't have to, you can just coil a couple of times and then cut it. I am going to coil it because I want a coiled in swirl on this one. Then I'm gonna stop, so I did there five wraps, and I'm gonna really snug that in, and I'm also going to tighten it. So I'm just gently kind of turning my wire, and I'm tightening it around that 16 gauge outside core wire. So I'm gonna do five wraps here, and I'm gonna tighten my coils. And I'm just slowly, without squeezing super hard, I'm just slowly twisting the wire. 
okay. Now, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking I want a couple of more coils. And I'm coming in on the inside now and just twisting that wire tight against that core wire. So I want to push it down. Holding my ring firmly. And this again is why we're using a heavier gauge wire. So it really supports the ring. Do a couple more coils. Now, when I'm not sure if I want to coil anymore, I'm going to bring my wire back through in between both wires, okay? And the reason why I'm doing that is in case I want to snap it off there, I don't have to try to wrap that wire through again. And I'm going to do another one here. Let's see, what do I got here? Six. I need one more. Seven. So I'm bringing that wire through again, just having it come in through the middle. Okay. And I probably won't snap it off. So now I want to make a loop on each side, but you always want to make sure that your ring is maintaining the integrity of its shape. So I'm going to put this back on my nine and I am going to just squeeze in the sides, make sure everything's lining up that this is flat against my mandrel and you can use your nylon jaw pliers to make sure those wires are sitting flat. Now, here's a tip. If you don't want to um, make your, we're gonna curl this wire into a little loop. If you don't wanna do that holding it, just leave it on your mandrel. But the first thing I'm gonna do is measure this length and I know it's too long. I want about a quarter inch of length in open wire. So you can't see this, but I'm just gonna measure this on my board and I'm gonna cut it at the quarter inch mark and I'm just gonna eye the other side because I pretty much know what I'm gonna need here. And I'm actually gonna bring this one down a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm gonna make my loop. So I'm gonna get my round nose pliers and I'm going to squish that end down a little bit. For those of you that watch me, I don't like flush ends a lot. And this is going to be kind of decorative. And then I'm going to do this one too. And I'm using the widest part of the jaw and I'm squishing that tip and I'm tapering off on it. So I'm, as I'm squishing it, I'm kind of rolling off that tip. Okay. Now I'm going to put my ring back on the mandrel because I want to make sure that these are laying flat and now I'm going to make my loops. So all I'm going to do is grab the tip, I'm hoping you guys can see this. And I'm just turning this loop, it's kind of awkward the way my hand is to show you this, into the ring. I'm really turning it in as I'm sliding off that tip. 
And do you see why I left my wire on the inside so I can either cut it on the back side? So this is what you should have. I'm going to turn this over so that I have a better working position because I'm right-handed and the other side would be awkward for me. So that's what we're looking at. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm really curling that tip in. And I'm just curling it into itself because I don't want anything sticking up. So that's what we're looking at. Isn't that cute? And your wire isn't going to come unraveled. And it's just so cute. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my, um, not take, I'm going to cut my wire. Get my sharpest. And I'm going to come down. And if you're a beginner, you want to cut your wire on the inside of that loop. And you really want to get on the inside of that. You don't want it sticking up at all. There we go. Really wanted that to be hidden. I don't want it poking anyone. And I'm just cinching down that end. I want to make sure I can't feel any Sharpies. I'm going to push my coils back a little bit. Just making some adjustments as we go. And so I don't want to feel anything. So I'm really smoothing that wire down, almost like melting it into the core wire. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this side. So I'm going to teach you a cool tip. If you pull your wire up away from the core wire, it gives you more working room to get up underneath it and closer to the inside. So I'm just going to trim that off. And I'm looking at that little wire sticking up in there. And sometimes it's just not possible to get it on the inside. So I am smoothing it down against the base wire, the core wire, or this swirl. And I'm using my pliers to taper it so I don't feel anything because there's nothing worse than something scratchy against your fingers. All right, isn't this cool? And it's a coming along. So I'm gonna put this back on my mandrel and this is a size, oops, let me turn it around, nine. And you see how it is semi-adjustable? Now, at this point, you have two options. If you didn't want it to be adjustable and you wanted it to connect and you wanted to close it off, all you'd have to do is bring these two wires together here Okay, and you could weave them together and then just create a coil into this one and a coil into that one if you wanted to close it off. So you just squeeze them together and you would weave these two together. So you have the size that you want and you don't want it to be adjustable. But to make it easier and especially for beginners, um, we're gonna go ahead and just make little tiny swirls or loops just to close this off, okay? Meaning we're not tying it together, just to complete the ring. So I'm going to cut these down, taking it off the mandrel, and I'm gonna measure from where my weaving stopped, and I'm gonna measure a quarter of an inch, because you need at least that much to make a swirl. So I know I need to cut this about here. 
And you could, by the way, you guys, go in the opposite direction if you wanted. It doesn't have to be in the same direction as this one. Or you could just curl, pardon me, curl the tip. It's up to you. So I'm thinking about what I want to do here, and I'm actually stinking thinking about it. And I think what I'm going to do is just curl the tip ever so gently. So I'm going to pull this wire a little bit straighter just for a second so I have some working room. And I can see that it's still a little bit longer than the other one. Just going to take a little snip off. And then, I don't know, I'm really thinking about do I want to curl them this way or do I want to curl them into that? Meaning in the direction of this swirl. And I think I'm just going to curl the tip in a little bit. It's whatever your vision is. So I am smashing that tip down. And now I'm going to put it on my ring mandrel so that I've got good support. And I'm just going to curl this in. You see that? And I'm going to turn it around, do the same thing on this side. I'm going to squ I got to put this down a little bit lower, you guys, because this the length of this mandrel is in my way. And I might have to take this out and do it because it's a very awkward position with the way the mandrel's sitting. So I'm going to do it off. Try to get down on the lower part of the jaw. Squish that tip in and roll off of it. Okay, I'm going to hold this very firmly and I'm just going to curl the tip in. And when your 16 gauge wire is this short, it's much harder to make little bends. So I'm going to put it back on my mandrel and make sure everything lines up. Now, if you have a rubber mallet or a raw high mallet, I'm not going to do this now because I'd have to go out to the garage again. I would very gently just tap all alongside your ring. Okay. So here's what we're looking at. Our finished darling, really cool, very unique ring. And you could actually wear it on this side. So it could be double sided. So I wanted it to fit my thumb. Isn't that cute? So you could have it facing this way. Or you could have it facing this way. And here's a tip. When you're selling rings, it's really good to help your, your, your clients. Teach them how to take a ring off and on. Never grab it by the bead or the stone itself. Always grab from the side and just rock it back and forth. It, the ring will last so much longer versus trying to pull it off from the bead. And we have a tendency, all of us, to pull off the highest point. Just show them that they don't need to do that and to always pull off the side. So anyways, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this darling little ring tutorial. I'd really love your feedback. So any comments that you want to make, let me know. And you can just take off on this any way you want. You can change the weaving, but I would make sure you do a very tight weave so it really supports the shank of your ring. And you could use three wires four wires. I've added in three extra wires when I've made this ring and it just gives it a different design element. But I sure hope you enjoy that. Thank you so much everyone for being a wonderful part of this magical 
ancient art of wire community and i just really really appreciate your support and as thumper said in bambi if you ain't got nothing nice to say don't say nothing at all i wish for all of you all that you wish for yourselves have a wonderful magical fabulous wire wrap day bye for now